वेलकम टू एस बाबा सो वेलकम टू प्रिलिम्स एक्सक्लूसिव प्रोग्राम 2024. सो आई एम श्योर ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग वेरी गुड प्रिपरेशन फॉर प्रिलिम्स फ्रॉम लास्ट कपल ऑफ मंथ्स एंड नाउ इट इज अ टाइम टू टेक योर प्रिलिम्स प्रिपरेशन टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल सो दैट इज वेयर दिस प्रिलिम्स प्रोग्राम which is designed by as baba is going to definitely help you all of you in a very very uh, good manner okay so all in all we know the history we have if you have seen the schedule there are uh, 20 classes are there okay so overall 20 classes we have to complete ancient history medieval history as well as uh, modern history also and including art and culture too okay so obviously it's going to be uh, very uh, content rich classes uh, that i'm going to definitely assure you people and most importantly uh, the pyqs that is that is i should say mc Qs of last, let's say around uh, from 2011 to 2023. Whatever the MCQs that has been asked in UPSC, in ancient history, in medieval history, as well as in modern history, everything is going to be covered in the classes too. Okay, so once we complete the topic, and we will try to answer the MCQ based upon that particular topic. So what do you mean by palette? Of course, if you getting any kind of doubts, if you want to go to the previous slide, please let me know. I will definitely go back to the previous slide. Okay, so we are going to. Uh, Have that interaction too. What do you mean by paleo? Paleo means old. Okay, so paleo means old. And what do you mean by lithic? Lithic means stone. Okay, so paleo means old. Lithic means stone, and that is the reason it is called as old stone age. Okay, so it's a Greek terms. That is paleo old. Lithic means stone, and that is the reason this time period is called as old stone age. And where it starts? It starts from two million years ago and goes on until. 10000 BCE okay so it goes on until 10000 BCE okay so this is it palette the basic meaning we are showed that one at the same time i told you uh, there is a period of pleistocene period and this pleistocene period can also be called as ice age what do you mean by ice age it means the earth entire earth was covered with ice when this paleolithic culture was evolving okay when this paleolithic culture was evolving entire earth was covered with ice and that is the reason uh, the ice age is also called as pleistocene time period so you must have seen the movies right ice age okay ice age movies hollywood movies you must have seen and uh, during that point of time only this human evolution this paleolithic culture all these things were starting to evolution okay so this is the early evidence this is a time period it is a paleolithic time period and uh, it is a uh, geologically pleistocene time period it is the early evidence of humans living in india not before that not before paleolithic but from the paleolithic time onwards the human evolution started to happen in india so humans started to live in india can you guess what is the race of this human any idea can anybody give me give me answer what is the race any idea today we have various races of people right humans hmm? negroid yes some people would say that is probably negrito okay so it was negrito race but again uh, it is quite probably that is according to the present research structure that is people would say the early humans living in india probably belong to negrito race okay so very good you people have good amount of knowledge and uh, that would make my job quite easier okay so that racially negrito okay and now the other general characteristics of paleolithic time period like we talked about the paleolithic meaning uh, which time period early evidence of humans living in india race shall also okay so now sir one of my query job doing upsc preparation um that is not the question to ask right now that is the i told you that is this is the question to time to ask questions about that is particularly uh, with respect to the uh, topics we are discussing any kind of general queries you have i know you can have the general queries that we will take up after the classes other uh, classes now general characteristics now what did they eat what is the food products they eat can you give me any idea mm -hmm. what is the food they were eating hmm? anybody <laughs> what food okay meat fruits very good that is fruits vegetables and then again meat okay so that these are the food they were eating okay so raw meat as yes, we can also use the word that is that we can say raw meat may not be cooking but we can say raw meat also yes vegetables fruits and meat but how did they get their food did they do swiggy and zomato Hmm? Were they using swiggy and zomato to get all this food? No, right? But how they got this food? They got the food through hunting and gathering. So Paleolithic people' subsistence base was based on hunting 
and gathering they used to hunt the food products uh, we can say that is meat they used to hunt for meat and then they used to gather these fruits and vegetables from the wild that is from the forests okay so we understood what they eat and we also understood how they get their food also through hunting and gathering okay so obviously did not have the modern methods of ordering from swiggy and zomato okay so then other general characteristics where did they live or resided which places which kind of places they resided any idea hmm? where they resided caves very good that is they resided in caves and open air system okay so that is they used to live in uh, caves obviously we are going to talk about some of the caves so when we talk about the cultural history we will talk about the bimbedka caves you must have heard about very famous bimbedka caves that is there in uh, madhya pradesh we will come to we will discuss about and the center they also live in open air also open air also and at the same time did they choosing this caves place as well as open air position this is choosing the residing place in any specific geography can we see these caves in a very specific geography near to any specific geography yes near water bodies very good okay so that is near water bodies like rivers okay so now all these paleolithic people the prehistoric time period people they used to live in caves and these caves were carefully chosen who are quite near to the water bodies okay so that is how it has been chosen near water bodies like rivers as well as lakes also okay so that is very good okay so now we understood what they eat at the same time where did they live at the same time how they got their food and where the specific geography and that is the reason because their uh, living place are near rivers and their paleolithic sites when we talk about specific settlements these are near water bodies these are near river valleys like the ganga river valley okay indus river valley Nar narmada river valley tungabhadra river valley kaveri river valley so that is where all the paleolithic and mesolithic sites have been found okay so now there is a subdivision of this paleolithic age also the first we talk of paleolithic mesolithic neolithic everything right so within paleolithic also there is some subdivisions okay so this paleolithic subdivisions can be called the early or lower paleolithic okay then again middle paleolithic later upper paleolithic okay so now with this i told you paleolithic age that is 2 million years ago to 10000 bc okay 10000 bc okay and now this paleolithic further divided into lower paleolithic then again middle paleolithic and then again upper paleolithic okay so that is further same this time period further subdivided that is between 100,000 bc to until 39,000 bc that is lower paleolithic and middle paleolithic from 39,000 bc to 23,000 bc and from later upper paleolithic from 23,000 bc to 10,000 we know paleolithic ends at 10,000 this is a further subdivision but on what basis okay so on what basis it has been divided into three phases is that one that is divided by this edward latted he is a person okay so who further subdivided who used the term paleolithic and neolithic who is the person already mentioned who is the person who mentioned 1863 18 john dubak very good now within paleolithic the further subdivision happened early lower paleolithic middle paleolithic that is used by edward latted okay so edward latted and on what basis on the base of different tools they use and fauna that is found in this time period fauna means different animals at the same time different tools within paleolithic also lower paleolithic tools are different middle paleolithic tools are different and then again upper paleolithic tools are different also we are going to see the images we are going to see the images we will see the pictures and then we are going to understand this particular concept okay so got it paleolithic age then further subdivided into lower paleolithic middle paleolithic and then again upper paleolithic don't worry about this uh, uh, time period you can have the rough idea you can have the rough idea and uh, the, the rough idea would be able to help you to uh, better answer the questions okay and now we are coming into early paleolithic right now obviously within paleolithic we are coming into early paleolithic everybody understanding it right any doubts in this particular topics huh? any particular no doubts very good very good to hear okay so yes no doubts very good okay is it fast is it fast is the speed is fine mm -hmm. is the speed is fine mm -hmm. 
या स्पीड इज फाइन फाइन ओके वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड ओके सर मिडिल पेलैलिथिक इज एस्टाब्लिश बाय संका या विल कम टू दैट वन वी स्टिल इन अर्ली पेलैलिथिक देन वी विल कम टू मिडिल पेलैलिथिक ओके सो अर्ली पेलैलिथिक द फीचर्स ऑफ अर्ली पेलैलिथिक दैट इज द आई टोल्ड यू दिस अर्ली पेलैलिथिक मिडिल पेलैलिथिक हैज बीन डिवाइडेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ स्टोन टूल्स नाउ व्हिच टाइप ऑफ स्टोन टूल्स दे यूज्ड दैट इज वी कैन से एंड एक्स ओके सो दैट इज वीडियो क्वालिटी इज वेरी वेरी पुअर आई मे बी आई विल आस्क टू द a technical team they will verify it once i give the break presently please try to understand okay so now and ax the type of tools they use was and ax okay so that is and ax okay so uh, early paleolithic stone tools that is called as and ax so at the same time these stone tools were unpolished they were not polished stone tools but when we come to neolithic time period the people of neolithic time period they started using the polished stone tools but in the middle paleolithic our even in early paleolithic upper paleolithic paleolithic as a whole even mesolithic also people used unpolished stone tools okay at the same time this particular age the early paleolithic age it covers the uh, entire part of the ice age okay so entire part of ice age is covered by early paleolithic that is from nearly uh, we can say that is uh, 2 million years ago to until 10000 bc the most part of the paleolithic that we talked about the 2 million years until 39000 bc and that is covered by early paleolithic time period only okay so you can see the stone tools okay so the early paleolithic stone tools okay and Un unpolished means that is rough edges right okay so non sharpened that is some so one of your friends has mentioned that is non sharpened that is poly when you when we see the neolithic stones okay so that you can see the differences okay i will show the image don't worry okay so you will get the perceptible difference and these are unpolished because they are not nice right okay they are uh, they are very uh, sharp edges also okay so they are quite rough uh, that is called as unpolished so these are the early paleolithic stone tools i told you this is called as and axe early paleolithic stone tools at the same time they are used unpolished stone tools and most of the early paleolithic time period cover the ice ages too okay so there are some other tools also used it is fine any doubts in this we are getting it right okay fine then we will move okay fine then so other tools also used like they use cleavers and choppers okay so these cleavers and choppers are also unpolished you can see here that's all the three uh, stone tools are there it is like chopping what in my chopping chopping is used for chopping of meat okay so what is the doubt yes mm -hmm. what's the doubt chopping is used for chopping of the meat okay at the same time and axe that is used for again hunting purposes okay not right now audio audio we will do no not right now uh, audio can we do it later please can you type in the chat box okay because please uh, type your doubt in the chat box that would be great because audio we are going to connect after the class i am going to connect uh, through audio only okay so then we will uh, clear the doubt right now because uh, otherwise uh, it is going to take uh, can you type the doubt please okay if entire earth is covered by ice age how you must live there i mean i wish there is they use through hunting right they use through hunting ice is there mammals for also there other species for also there okay so they got adjusted to that climate earth's climate has gone through lot of changes and most of the time that is there are four to five ice ages are there entire earth was already covered with ice age. then the earth became warmer then the agriculture started okay so then the agriculture started and then people uh, started to have sedentary lifestyles okay so that is there okay so then now that is how we can stick to that kind of during ice age uh, not whole earth was covered by ice yes that is also there that is quite subjective okay so now that is tools of paleolithic era okay so that is a chopper and axe and cleavers now what is the uses of this particular sto stone tools what they use for hmm? this again these are also unpolished stone tools too okay so all these are unpolished stone tools now what these stones are made of hmm? which stone they are made up of any idea you know in geography you must have read different quartzite yes very good that is they are made up of quartzite okay so that is the reason these paleolithic people particularly early paleolithic people they are also called as quartzite men also okay sometimes they can ask the question quartzite men belong to which of the following paleolithic mesolithic neolithic uh, we can say chalcolithic what is what should be the answer quartzite men related to paleolithic 
getting right and of course the entire paleolithic is called as uh, quartzite pen only and within paleolithic particularly we can talk about specifically if they ask the questions too specific then which paleolithic it would be early paleolithic or middle paleolithic it should be early paleolithic okay so it should be early paleolithic okay so that is very good and send them basalt stone tools were also used some stone tools were made up of quartzite and some stone tools were made up of basalt also okay so these are the different types of uh, stones that is we can say primary stone secondary tertiary that is we can say sedimentary uh, stones are there and then again uh, send metamorphic stones are there sedimentary stones are there and now they use the quartzite as well as basalt and that is the reason paleolithic people also called as quartzite pen now what is the use of these tools these cleavers choppers and hand axe what is the purpose for which purpose they used it hmm? for which purpose they used it anybody which purpose hmm? what is the use of this stone tools cutting of meat fruits very good okay so hunting yeah very good that is the use for hunting purposes and it is used for chopping of the meat okay so that is what they use for use for at the same time digging also digging holes sometimes that is also necessary that is at the same time overall we can say skinning they want to remove the skins of the uh, animals which they hunted and these are the uses of the tools that is the hunting purpose chopping purpose digging purpose as well as skinning purpose also okay so any idea in the, any, any doubts in this very good okay so is it fine okay very good okay and now the features some more features of early paleolithic did they stay at one place this early paleolithic people because all these things we are talking about early paleolithic no they did not stay at one place then what they did did they move from one place to another place yes that is they are movers okay so that we can say that is wanderers okay so they kept moving from one place to another place for what purpose why they have to move from one place to another place for food purpose because they are hunters and gatherers to look for food resources that is the reason they have to that is they have to move from one place to another place okay so population was higher or lower whether they were small communities or large communities okay very low population very low population so can we say small communities yes and so called as bands also okay so they used to have small bands of people they used to have some community communities and these small communities move from one place to another place in search of what in search of food resources okay so that is how the culture is there during the paleolithic time period okay so small communities wanderers and they lived in caves and they got their food through these stone tools another feature we can say what is the dressing style what is the dressing style of this paleolithic people particularly paleolithic people animal skins very nice okay that is animal skin they used barks they used okay then again leaves they used to cover their bodies with their leaves okay so there were no uh, cloths during that point of time rather they used animal skin as their um, mat uh, their dressing material and then again bark of the trees as their dressing material and leaves as the dressing material okay so these are the major items of we can say that is dressing materials and this is the first time this is lower paleolithic time period or we can say early paleolithic time period the fire used by humans okay so fire was used for the first time and where this evidence is there in karnul caves where is karnul <laughs> in which state karnul is there andhra pradesh very good that is karnul is in andhra pradesh okay so for the first time in human history fire was used during lower paleolithic or also called as early paleolithic okay so now which humans use that one we are humans uh, we are homo sapiens sapiens isn't right so but which human ancestors used the fire for the first time any idea anybody which human ancestors not homo habilis but homo erectus okay homo erectus is the first uh, that is human uh, species or we can say human ancestors who use the fire okay so what do you mean by erectus means that is upright man okay so erectus means upright man okay so this is the uh, other feature about early paleolithic or lower paleolithic okay so that is fire used for the first time and the fire marks could be seen in karnul caves that is in andhra pradesh and used by fire was used by homo erectus and homo erectus means upright man because presently human species homo sapiens sapiens before that homo habilis homo erectus australopithecus neanderthals ramapithecus sivapithecus there are so many uh, different uh, evolutions is there okay so the fire was first used by homo it means full evolution of humans has not not already happened even during the early paleolithic time period okay so can they speak 
Did they have any kind of language? Hmm? Can they speak? Did they have any kind of language? But anatomically, when you see Homo erectus picture, they, they have the ability to speak. Anatomically, they can speak, but it is quite unclear. So, we don't have any clear evidence because we don't have any written history, right? We don't have any kind of written history to know about the Paleolithic time period. What we are, how we are getting to know about Paleolithic is through their particular stone tools. Stone tools is the way how we are going to understand the prehistorical time period. Okay, so Homo erectus, that's what it is. Now, what they did not know, we already talked about what they know already. Okay, so they can speak but unclearly yeah we can say that one that is it is quite an anatomically they can speak anatomically okay so it means as the body you see they have mouth yes they could speak but whether they speak what kind of language they speak that is quite unclear probably they use the sign languages okay sign language that is used by uh, this apes uh, probably and that is how probably they communicated okay so now what they did not know what they did not know it is unclear about their language that's what i'm saying agriculture obviously very good they did not know house building they did not know okay construction they did not know okay so they did not have any because they lived in natural caves at the same time pottery also they did not know agriculture did not know metal also they don't know because we don't have any metal evidence of paleolithic because what we are talking about is stone age not the metal age metal ages comes later okay so metal they did not know at the same time writing also so these are the things that was not known to which people we are talking about Paleolithic and uh, of entire Paleolithic also and particularly within Paleolithic specifically which Paleolithic early Paleolithic okay so that's why this culture is called as prehistory okay so there is a, again there are three types of history prehistory proto history and then again history okay so what is the difference between these three is that one prehistory means that is we are going to learn about a culture where they did not know any kind of writing and that is palace stone ages okay writing sources with no written sources history means where there is a written source about the culture like we talk about ashoka through his inscriptions right okay through ashokan inscriptions and that is the reason that is the history we can say what is a proto history means example we can see ivc as well as vedic culture this proto history is between these two okay so that is the prehistory as well as history between that proto history it means we learn about these two again from the archaeological source archaeology of course prehistory is also learned through archaeology but this culture, proto culture, like IVC as well as Vedic, okay. Vedic, we know their Vedas are uh, orally transmitted, isn't it? Vedas are initially, they were orally transmitted. IVC adds script, we will see in Indus Valley civilization, okay. IVC adds script, but we have not been able to decipher the script. Okay, we have not been able to decipher this undecipher and that is the reason this is called as proto history still writing was there but the writing writing is undeciphered and that is the reason that is called as proto history ivc yes vedas were there but at the same time they we but the vedas were written quite later okay so mesopotamian are in which part uh, mesopotamia add the script we have been able to read that script mesopotamia comes in history mesopotamia comes in history and proto history also the evidences about this culture let's say for example ivc's culture could be seen in mesopotamia mesopotamia culture mesopotamian scripts mention about the ivc mentioned about the contacts about ivc and that is the reason ivc is called as proto history okay so we have the script we have not been able to decipher it on mesopotamia is not proto history but rather mesopotamia is a history because we could able to decipher the script of mesopotamia okay so that is how it has been divided so three types of history prehistory proto history and history so presently we are talking about uh, prehistory now where are these uh, settlements are found okay where these settlements of we can say uh, the paleolithic and early paleolithic has been found particularly paleolithic found in sohan and sohan river valley now they are in pakistan okay so that is where it has been found and who excavated these sites are dn wadia okay so dn wadia excavated these particular sites okay then again tar desert in rajasthan okay at the same time in rajasthan there is a place called as didwana that is where uh, this uh, culture could be seen this early paleolithic culture could be seen and this didwana is also called as india's old white gorge okay so india's old white gorge 
Olduvai Gorge is a place in Tanzania, okay, and that place is quite well known for this Paleolithic culture as well as this anthropologic evolution also. Okay, so that Didwana in India it is called as Olduvai Gorge. Olduvai Gorge is a place in Tanzania, and the Tanzania that is this place. Tanzania, where is Tanzania? Which continent Tanzania is in? which country in Africa very good Africa is in Tanzania okay Tanzania there is a place called as old Y and that, that is known for paleolithic culture as well as anthropology culture and that is the reason that place has been linked to that is Didwana that is compared to Didwana in Rajasthan and Iran Valley it's a river Iran River Valley in Gujarat that is where this early paleolithic culture could be seen then again Yadurwadi it's in Belagavi district of Karnataka okay so Yadurwadi another place and that is Belagavi district of Karnataka at the same time Isampur that is in Kalburgi district of Karnataka okay so that is this Isampur is a center of stone tool manufacture because many stone tools have been discovered from this particular place in heaps and bounds we have discovered stone tools from Isampur Isampur is in Kalburgi Karnataka okay so then again Belan river valley okay so Belan river valley that is in Mirzapur Uttar Pradesh okay so this is where all these uh, sites have been found and now what is your task is that one your task is is to put all these places in a map take one empty India map okay so whatever the map places I'm going to mention and your responsibility is to mark these maps okay mark these places because that will help you to revise better and at the same time that will also help you to visualize these places better in which part of India whether northern part of India southern part of India eastern part or western part everywhere you are definitely going to get a good sense of it okay so still I am going to give you more settlements area uh, names and your responsibility so tomorrow uh, you people will do it right today only you people today do it and tomorrow I am going to ask you people whether you have done it or not okay so just take a map and mark all the places today I am going to give you more many places and mark all those places and at the end of the class I am going to give you one, one task every day after the class i will give you one task about your prelims okay so please try to complete the task that is definitely going to help you what is this task about the mcq analysis i will tell you after the class okay so that is one thing then at the same time kashmir also so some of the places can also be seen in kashmir also okay so some special site is there that one special site that is called as rock shelters of bimbetka okay where is bimbetka bimbetka is in madhya pradesh okay so bimbetka is in madhya pradesh and it is in which uh mountains that is in Vindhya's mountains because why I am linking uh history with geography because sometimes the questions have, if you have seen the mcq one question was asked right ajanta caves are on the uh, banks of wagora river okay these kind of questions are also asked history has been linked to geography also and that is the reason you should learn the technique of linking one particular topic to another topic linking one particular topic to another subject also okay so that is how we should go on like at the same time it is the particularly which one and uh, bimbetka it is inside ratapani wildlife sanctuary okay so that is how we are trying to link environment also okay so that is how the uh, i'm just giving you some sense how we should keep on linking because if they give a question consider the following statement bimbedka is a paleolithic site second statement bimbedka is found inside ratapani wildlife sanctuary obviously as a history person you have read bimbedka is in madhya pradesh so because you haven't linked to that one can you repeat the second and third point yes that is bimbetka in the located in the southern edge of the vindhyas the vindhyas mountains okay so where is vindhyas mountains again which part of india northern part central part southern part where it is in india okay central part of india okay so vindhyas mountains at the same time bimbetka in these mountains there is a wildlife sanctuary that is ratapani wildlife sanctuary and this bimbetka is in ratapani wildlife sanctuary so they can link interlink these kind of things too okay so consider the following statement bimbetka is in madhya pradesh it's a paleolithic site and second statement bimbetka is located inside a wildlife sanctuary which wildlife sanctuary Ratapani wildlife sanctuary sometimes they don't even mention the wildlife sanctuaries also because the questions are getting more and more difficult and you have to have the idea about that is uh, which particular wildlife sanctuary that is you got it okay so second and third point that is the Vindhyas mountains that is where uh, Bimbetka is there at the same time uh, inside the Ratapani wildlife sanctuary okay so this is also there are now seven hills are there in the particular region and then one of the hills is the Bimbetka hills also okay so now why the name of Bimbetka comes in because according to mythology i'm giving some mythological connection also bhima that is one of the pandavas he used to rest 
in this Bimbedka case, uh, especially when they were in exiles, okay, when they were in exile. So Bhima used to rest in Bimbedka case, and that is the reason the name Bhima has been used. Okay, and who called it as a Paleolithic site in 1957? That is V.S. Wakankar. Okay, so V.S. Wakankar he described Bimbedka as a Paleolithic site because Paleolithic cultures could be seen, and some of the uh, paintings are also discovered from Bimbedka that we will see in Artan culture. Okay, so I told you Artan culture. I'm going to take up separately about this all this Paleolithic. Getting it right? Okay, so now we are trying to link some mythology also. So Bima used to live in Bimbedka places, Bimbedka caves, and that is the reason uh, that name Bimbedka has been used to. And uh, before that one, because V.S. Wakankar said it is a Paleolithic site, but one more person W. Kincaid, that is, he was a British officer in 1888, he called it as a Buddhist site. Okay, some persons are associated because I already seen very persons, and that is, uh, we have in initial only three ages, uh, that is, particularly Stone Age, Bronze Age, and again, Metal Iron Age. We saw th three persons at the same time. Now we are seeing different uh, archaeologists, and these archaeologists played a huge important role in excavation of all these sites. Sometimes they can ask for the Matthew following, also, right. They can also ask for Matthew following of these names and the particular site also. That's why I'm telling you, keep anticipating the questions. If you don't anticipate, you will be behind. Okay, so the person who actually have the edge in UPSC preparation, particularly in prelims, is that one, keep on anticipating. Even in mains also, but keep on anticipating the questions. By utilizing these content, utilizing these points, what kind of questions UPSC can form? While reading, keep forming the questions in your mind. Okay, so now they can ask for Matthew following. They can ask for just one statement base. Like suppose, for example, uh, consider the following statements: Bimbedka located in Madhya Pradesh. Yes, right. Okay, so Bimbedka got the name from uh, Mahabharata's uh, Bima from Bima's name. Okay, at the same time, Bimbedka is defined as a Paleolithic site by V. S. Wakankar. They can ask all these kind of questions, right? Okay, so see, from four to five points, obviously you can make different kind of questions so keep anticipating these kind of questions too okay then again here in bimbedka one fossil is also found what that fossil is it is dickinsonia okay so dickinsonia is a fossil what is the fossil what is the fossil fossil means hmm? what is the fossil anybody what is the fossil means dead remains okay remains of a living remains of a living and this dickinsonia it belongs to an animal kingdom not plant kingdom but belong to an animal kingdom okay so dickinsonia belong to uh, could you please repeat bima line related i mean how the bimbedka name comes in okay so bima that is bimbedka name it comes from uh, bima bima related to mahabharata right that is pandavas that is he used to rest in these caves bimbedka caves and that is how the name has been come into being okay so now this animal kingdom is extinct right now okay so what it shows is that one bimbedka is a paleolithic site bimbedka is also a fossil site also okay some kind of fossil site is also can be related to bimbedka too okay so any doubts in this particularly obviously that is uh, particularly about one place look at the how much content we are getting into isn't it we talked about it as a paleolithic site okay so we talked about it as a fossil site also we linked it to geography also we linked it to environment also at the same time we linked it to little mythology also okay so that is how preparation should happen comprehensive preparation so comprehensive preparation is what ultimately is going to help you to clear uh, entire UPSC both prelims also as well as mains also so this fossil name is Dickinsonia okay so Dickinsonia is a fossil name and that fossil belong to an animal kingdom not the plant kingdom but an animal kingdom okay so now Bimbedka is also paleolithic site Bimbedka is also a fossil site okay so now we are coming into middle paleolithic all these things what i have talked about is about early paleolithic okay so now we are coming into middle and what basis these three time period are there lower paleolithic middle paleolithic and upper paleolithic on what basis i already told you on what basis just a simple revision how this three division has been then on the base of stone tools okay on the base of stone on the base of tools this classification is there. and on the base of phone also but mainly on the basis of stone tools okay so now this middle paleolithic which somebody already told this one that is sd sankalia established middle paleolithic in india okay so sd sankalia is an archaeologist is a person who actually excavated did more research about middle paleolithic now a new stone style came into being so what is a stone <coughs> 
which kind of stone tools that used in early paleolithic that is uh, we can talk about that is the chopper uh, sorry chop, uh, choppers and then again unpolished stone tools and that is what that has been used during the early paleolithic time period now the new stone tile came into being they are called as flakes somebody has uh, shown there it is called as flakes okay so flakes means chip or scrap some kind of a layer of rock i will show the image i will show the image so who excavated more related to paleolithic age almost the mention whatever the name i mentioned that john lubbock then at the same time robert bruce fruit i will come to that name later and those people have played a huge important role in paleolithic excavation i will give that name quite later about the paleolithic as a whole i will give some names also later presently just stick to these names okay middle paleolithic st sankalia that is overall paleolithic i will give the names later uh, the father of indian prehistory everything i am going to give you later please uh, wait for a moment uh, called as flakes it means point scrapers are blade like tools okay so these are flake tools are called as very very pointed and blade like blade like and they are also called as flint industries flint means they are made up of hard silica which stone tools are which stone uh, the early paleolithic stone tools are made up of which stone quartzite stone basalt stone but middle paleolithic stone tools they are made up of flint flint means hard silica okay so you can see the uh, the flakes the kind of a stone tool that is being used during the time period of uh, middle paleolithic okay so this is sd sankalia is the one who actually excavated all, most of the middle paleolithic time period and the new stone tool that is also do the flakes then we can say layers kind of a layer that is you can just say one layer of rock you can just hammer that rock like this you will get a layer okay you will get a layer and that is called as flake tools and they are made up of which material which stone hard silica okay sir please explain himalayan glaciation now it is related to stone ages glaciation is nothing but that is not it is a how the time period has been changing that is the overall uh, glaciation time period like we can say ice age and warmer age and the ice age is the time period that is early paleolithic is there uh, someone's audio is open please can you meet, mute it someone's audio is open someone's his audio is there please it will be disturbing for others okay so alternating glacial time period led to the evolution of different uh, stone ages the different stone ages of paleolithic, early paleolithic and middle paleolithic like i told you how the pleistocene time period related to paleolithic holocene time period related to mesolithic and neolithic and glacial time period change different kind of evolution kept on happening okay so these about middle paleolithic some features some features like flint industries hard silica they can ask the match the following also right lower paleolithic uh, that is quartzite stone tools okay so middle paleolithic we can say which one that is flint stone tools or we can say hard silica stone tools okay so that is slightly pointed we can say that is a blade like tools or we can say scrapers we can say okay so that is the type of stone tools they use during middle paleolithic now where they are found we already seen where the early paleolithic have been found okay so flint industries means flint means hard silica flint is a type of stone okay flint industries mean hard silica it means the entire middle paleolithic stone tools are called as flint industries okay so flint stone tools flint means silica flint means silica got it okay flint means silica and now where they are found okay so where all these are found <laughs> middle paleolithic stone tools found in soan valley like in pakistan we already seen again they are found in narmada river valley tungabhadra river valley luni valley where is luni valley luni valley is in uh, gujarat we can say okay so luni valley is in gujarat and where is tungabhadra river valley where is tungabhadra river hmm? where is tungabhadra river karnataka very good okay so uh, and say where is narmada between which two mountains narmada river between which two mountains Narmada river flows between which two mountains hmm? again that's why i told you that is uh, interlinking a subject should also happen vindhya and satpura okay then again sangavo caves that is near peshawar presently pakistan okay so sangavo caves are there okay, very good vindhya and satpura okay sangavo caves at the same time kalpi that is in uttar pradesh okay so kalpi in uttar pradesh we are talking about middle paleolithic st stone tools okay so middle paleolithic sites that is found in kalpi in uttar pradesh and nevasa that is in maharashtra okay on the banks of uh, pravara it's a river pravara river one of the tributaries of godavari okay so one of on the banks of pravara tributary of godavari and that is where uh, middle one of the middle paleolithic site could be seen that is in nevasa that is in maharashtra 
and here particularly in nevasa one technique was used to make these stone tools particularly which stone tools we are talking about the middle palatic stone tools and the technique is called as lavaloy technique lavaloy technique means in a systematic way you are hammering a block of the stone so you keep on hammering that one in a desired shape until you get the desired shape okay so that is called as lavaloy technique okay so that is called as hammering a block of stone to get that uh, middle paleolithic uh, stone tool okay so they wanted in a specific structure they wanted in a specific design okay so and the design was gotten through hammering a block of stone okay so that is called as lavaloy technique and where it is used that is used in nevasa Okay, that is in nevasa like they can ask the question lavaloy technique related to which of the following it is related to middle paleolithic stone tool structure okay at the same time some spar sites could be seen in chota nagpur plateau okay then again deccan plateau then again eastern ghats also where is chota nagpur plateau where is chota nagpur plateau which states chota nagpur plateau is in hmm? Jharkhand, very good. Chodanagpur plateau that is in Jharkhand. Okay, so that is Jharkhand. And at the same time, it could be seen in Deccan plateau also. Some could be seen in Eastern Ghats also. Okay, so now we are coming into Upper Paleolithic. Okay, middle Paleolithic, very, very simple. We talked about Lower Paleolithic, what kind of stone tools. We talked about Middle Paleolithic, what kind of stone tools and where they are found. Now we are coming into Upper Paleolithic. Now, we talked about the Lower Paleolithic. Homo erectus use the fire. But by the time of Upper Paleolithic, Homo sapiens, presently, present humans, please show the last slide. Yes, please. Okay. So, that is, you can, sometimes the content becomes too much. No, you can just take the screenshot. Okay. You can just a screenshot. You can just keep it over there. Later, you can make a note of that one. And don't worry, I will share the PPTs. After the class gets over, I will share the PPTs and uh, uh, I will make sure that will reach uh, you people, all of you people. But not before the class. I will share the PPTs after the classes. Okay. Don't worry about that one. But presently, if you want to uh, make a note of it, take a screenshot in your phones and then keep it slightly because if you want to, you require that to make a notes but later all the classes uh, gets over i will share the ppts don't worry about it that is my responsibility okay again someone's audio is out please try to mute okay now upper paleolithic we are coming into i told you homo sapiens are completely evolved by this point of time okay so that we in middle paleolithic sorry uh, overall paleolithic 2 million years ago to 10000 bc by the time uh, upper paleolithic come into being homo sapiens are completely evolved and also climate was becoming warmer like i told you the early part of the time period most of the earth was covered with ice but right now the earth climate is becoming more and more warmer okay so and the tools that is used during upper paleolithic are called as burins and what is the tools during middle paleolithic flint uh, add silica okay and uh, which kind of stone to stone tools that is used during the time period of early early paleolithic that is choppers cleavers and also made up of quartzite okay so these are burins okay so these are burins and again, Middle Paleolithic and Upper Paleolithic, are you still seeing the unpolished stone tools or polished stone tools? These are polished or unpolished? I told you early Paleolithic is unpolished, still unpolished, unpolished. Okay, so Middle Paleolithic is also unpolished, Upper Paleolithic is also unpolished. Polished stone tools came only during the time period of Neolithic, only during the time period of Neolithic. Okay, so these are called as burins, they use for engraving purposes, like some kind of engraving purposes okay so engrave engraving is what just to have some kind of engraving on a rock all these kind of things and that's what the burins are used for and look at this one this pointed uh, blade kind of thing okay so that is used for engraving on a rock surface okay so they also use bone tools now the new kind of stone tools are coming uh, sorry not stone tools a new type of different type of tool is coming that is bone what bone tools human bone tools or animal bone tools animal okay so animal bones are also used as tools too okay so animal bones also used as stones or tools and that is during which time period upper paleolithic but in early paleolithic and middle paleolithic we don't we only have stone tools okay but in upper paleolithic we have stone tools also and at the same time we also have animal bones tools also okay so that is the difference okay so that's why i told you right uh, the classification of this three time period is on the base of different tools they use and also they are called as 
parallel sided blades that is parallel side means both sided okay so it is not just one side blade but rather both the sides there will be uh, that blade content will be there okay so these upper palletic stone tools also called as parallel sided blades that is on this type also okay on this time also okay so on the, both the sides you will have the parallel sided blades too okay so this is called as upper paleolithic you got it understood right what is the differences differences between lower paleolithic middle paleolithic as well as upper paleolithic any doubts in this anybody we can answer a few questions no very nice here very good okay and now where they are found again what is your duty what is your responsibility about all these places what you have to do you have to do it on a map you have to put it on a map okay maps very good okay very good now found in andhra pradesh karnataka i will give you the specific sites next slide i'm giving you the broader area or no need to write this just uh, listen okay that is found in andhra pradesh maharashtra central madhya pradesh then again southern uttar pradesh okay then again chodanagpur plateau this is the broader area where this upper paleolithic uh, sites are found it is just a broader now we are coming into uh, that is specific sites i will specific sites i will come in the next particular slide now bone tools i told you right bone tools have been found in upper paleolithic they are found only at two places and they are cave sites of karnul and cave sites of muchatla chintamani gavi both are in andhra pradesh okay so in upper paleolithic upper paleolithic stone tools are found in all these areas but the bone tools are found only in two specific areas two specific caves that is karnul caves muchatla chintamani gavi okay so were no animals present during the no animals were there but the animal bones were not, not used as tools are probably we haven't discovered animal uh, tools or animal bone tools during the time period of lower paleolithic and upper paleolithic got it right okay so animals were definitely there uh, first evolution was always animals okay but animal to bone tools for always there okay now cave sites why these two caves are known for known for bone tools particularly which time period upper paleolithic time period okay so now specific sites i told you you can make a note of these specific sites that is uniski that is in karnataka okay so uniski is a place in karnataka at the same time atiramapakam and kota layer that is in tamil nadu okay at the same time pahalgam that is in kashmir okay at the same time didwana that is in rajasthan we already talked about didwana what is didwana is called as didwana is is related to which particular paleoanthropocene of africa old oi gorge very good okay so then again atnora bimbedka and adamgad that is in madhya pradesh okay singroli that is in uttar pradesh then again mayurbanj that is in odisha okay mayurbanj that is in odisha okay so these are the specific sites related to which time period upper paleolithic time period do we find ostrich in india ostrich is a bird right okay so where do we find ostrich in which continent we do we find ostrich australia okay then land but africa mainly found in africa but in india also ostrich was there but not right now but used to be during this point of time period because in upper paleolithic time period one place the particularly in uttar pradesh we have found ostrich because we have discovered ostrich shells in banda okay that is in uttar pradesh okay so that is near uh, river kane okay so kane river is there so that is where we have discovered ostrich shells and of course ostrich are also discovered in uh, we can say uh, parts of rajasthan and madhya pradesh also but first discovered was in this place banda that is in uttar pradesh okay so in uh, near river kane so that is where ostrich shells have been discovered okay so are you getting value are you getting new kind of content hmm? new kind of content in these classes yes okay okay then okay so obviously prelims oriented content obviously we are going to have more and more content in the coming classes okay so it's my responsibility and we are going to discuss all the questions also because from this angle no questions have been asked so far this is a gray area and some might kind of questions can also come from this area also sometimes what happens we keep on focusing on the major areas where the questions are coming from but we forget the areas where the questions are not coming but at the same time we have to cover the gray areas also we have to cover the gray areas also because the where the questions are coming we have to give more than 100% where the questions are not coming we have to give our 100% okay so in every area please give your 100% okay so that is when you are going to stay ahead of all level okay so from all others 
So Banda UP asteroid shells have been found. Now there is a one more specific site that is called as Atnaura. Okay, Atnaura that is in on the banks of river Narmada. Okay, so Narmada river banks. One skull is discovered from this place, particularly one skull is discovered, and that is called as Narmada Man. Okay, that is called as Narmada Man. Okay, so so is a fossil site also. Okay, so Atnaura, where is Atnaura? I already mentioned. That is Atnora that is in Madhya Pradesh. Atnora that is in Madhya Pradesh. So, what has been discovered? Narmada man, it is called as one skull, a human skull has been discovered. So, it is a fossil site and belongs to category of Homo erectus. Whatever the skull that has been discovered from Atnora, that is called as that is belong to Homo erectus. Okay, so but by the time of Upper Paleolithic, uh, Homo sapiens sapiens had been evolved, but the skull which is discovered in Atnora belong to Homo erectus. Okay. Now, who is the person who discovered this one? Arun Sonakia in 1982. So, our information about all this Paleolithic, Mesolithic and Neolithic, it's fairly recent. Still research is going on. Okay. So, yeah, that is Homo uh, Narmadanesis. Yeah, that is a scientific name. Okay. So, discovered the site or the skull. No, no, he discovered the skull. That is Narmada man. He discovered the skull. He discovered the skull. Okay. That is what he is discovered. Okay. Arun. So, okay. So, our understanding Understanding about this uh, upper Paleolithic, middle Paleolithic, and all the Stone Ages also, entire ancient history is fairly recent. Okay, still the research is on going on. Okay, so now what is the hobbies of this Paleolithic people? Did they have TikTok, Instagram reels? Hmm? Did they spend time through all those things? No, but what did they do? Huh? Cave paintings, exactly right. That is they called as artistic activities. Okay, so yes, artistic activity, dancing, but this is an art and culture topic. But just to complete the Paleolithic, uh, that is, I'm taking this particular topic. Again, we will come back to painting activities more detail in more detail when we talk about art and culture. Because in art and culture, again, we will come back to uh, Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Industrial Civilization. That is definitely I'm going to take up in a separate classes. Practice painting. Okay, so where they practice painting? which which time period sorry which, in which places in caves and they belong and they practiced uh, painting uh, started from the upper paleolithic time period okay so it started from the upper paleolithic time period and it can be seen at very famous place what is a famous place bimbedka where is bimbedka bimbedka is in madhya pradesh and how the bimbedka name came into being why that bimbedka name because of bima and it's an inside in a which wildlife sanctuary which wildlife sanctuary bimbedka located in which mountains or we can say Hmm? Ratapani Valley of Century, Vindhyas Mountains. Yes, again, keep on revising. When any kind of new kind of content comes, you have already read, keep on revising this content. Okay. So then again, what is the painted subjects? On which subjects they painted? Hmm? On which subjects they painted? About uh, the geometric symbols, animals, what they did know. Okay. So what about the man structures? Okay. So everything they painted about. Okay. At the same time, these are called as line drawings. Line drawing in the sense that one, like simple like this. Okay, so not uh, simple, uh, we can say line drawings, so they represented animals in uh, lines also, humans in lines also, and they painted some geometric symbols, different animals they knew, okay, so different, uh, the oral activities, the daily activities, everything they painted, okay, so at the same time, one animal that is absent in paintings is a snake animal. We can see the other animals. Okay, so other animals, uh, whatever the animals the Paleolithic people did know, we come to know through their paintings. Okay, we come to know through their paintings. Okay, but one animal which is absent in their paintings is the snake animal. Okay, so you can see the uh, picture. Okay, this simple. Again, one uh, someone's audio is out. Someone's audio is there. Okay, please please mute. Okay, please mute. And this is the simple line drawings, okay, line drawings of which time period? Paleolithic time period. And particularly when it is began? Upper Paleolithic. One of the very famous site for paintings is Bimbedka. And which subjects they painted? The man, animal pictures, geometric symbols. And particularly one animal is absent. That animal is absent is snake animal. Okay, so some facts about the all this Paleolithic. Okay, so that I told you, there is one person who did a lot of excavation about the Paleolithic. Somebody asked the question. I told you I will come later. And that person was Robert Bruce Foot. Okay, so he began the first system study of human prehistoric remains in India about the prehistoric activities. The one person who started the research was Robert Bruce Foot. Okay, so he made the first discovery of Paleolithic Andax. Okay, we talked about the Andaxes, right? He made the first discovery of Paleolithic Andva Andax at a place called Palavaram that is in today that is in Tamil Nadu. Okay, so Palavaram today that is in Tamil Nadu, and his Andax is also called as Palavaram Andax. Okay, 
palavaram and axe so he is the first person who discovered the first paleolithic tool okay the first paleolithic tool was discovered by robert bruce foot in 1863 Okay, so in 1863. Okay, so most of the our understanding I told you about the prehistory is fairly recent. At the same time, this is the first Paleolithic tool to be discovered. Okay, so this is the first discovery of Paleolithic hand axe. But what is the first prehistory? I mean, entire prehistory. Okay, so that is the, that was first to be discovered was in 1856 by a person called Indri. Pevril Lee Mesurier. Okay, probably pronunciation could be different. He was a British railway engineer. Okay, he was a British. Almost most of our prehistoric sites and Indus Valley civilization sites they were discovered when Britishers were building railways. Okay, so the first ever prehistoric tool to be discovered was a small chert. Chert is a type of stone, a arrowhead. Okay, so that was discovered from a village called as uh, Nyagurhi, that is in Central India. Okay, so Central India, that we can say that is around Madhya Pradesh region. Okay, so that is where the first ever prehistoric tool to be discovered. But the first Paleolithic tool to be discovered, which can be further defined, that is called as Palavaram and tool. Okay, so is it Palavaram called present day Palavaram? Yeah. Okay, so what is the difference between both? Same first. That is, prehistory was there. Even before Paleolithic also, okay. So even before Paleolithic also there, okay. So that is called the Eolithic time period. We don't want to get into all those kind of things, okay. So the first ever, so first ever Paleolithic tools that is Palavaram that is in 1863, okay. The first prehistoric tool ever to be discovered, and that is 1856, okay. So it doesn't mean it belong to the Paleolithic itself only. It might belong to before Paleolithic also. Getting it right? What is the difference? that is a major difference okay so even before paleolithic also it could be defined but the first ever paleolithic stone tool is a palavaram and axe that is in tamil nadu any doubts in this